Annie, you are totally in deep thought. What's going on? I don't. Might you're be, thinking something. The truth is, for the past week, I've been thinking about that inverse. Uh, the inverse square law. Yeah, that thing. I've been trying to figure that thing out, man. Have you? Have you? Do you know? Look, what you, you gotta go. You gotta go stack back and think, lighten up and shoot style. I'm trying, man. But look, I mean, this, this is what I know. This is what they taught me in school. They were like, read you mean, this. You mean this thing right here? Yeah. This, yes, this thing. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, All right. Uh, that makes no sense to anybody. This, that doesn't even make sense to me. And I'm like a scientific genius. But look, think of f depth of field. Okay. Depth and what's of field. happening with depth of field, right? Let's say that I'm taking a picture of this, and the closer I am to my subject... Yeah, the less depth of field you're going to have, so you're going to have like an area of like this. Right, watch. right. So I might just focus the tip of that, but if okay. I move back here, what happens? You're going to have a I've greater got a larger area. depth of field. So how does that relate to... The inverse square law. The inverse square law. Oh, man. With should... light. You know what? I got an idea. We're changing the name. Forget about the inverse square law. It's going to be called... It's not inverse square law? No, not anymore. Depth of flash exposure. That's the only way I'm going to be able to learn it. So, it kind of as I'm like visually that. looking at depth of field, yeah. depth of flash exposure. Absolutely, because it's the same exact thing. The closer I am to my subject, if this is the light, yeah. If this is our light source now, the, I'm going to have the less depth of flash exposure. The further away my light source is going to be from my model, the larger my depth of flash exposure. You know what? That's awesome. Totally makes sense. You know what? Let's draw it out so everybody can see it. Okay, let's go do it. Depth of flash exposure, Mikey. Here take, we go. Take 153. I know. I, I can't draw, <laughs> guys, so I apologize. All right, so there's our 28-inch Westcott Apollo, one of our main light sources. Absolutely. And here's uh, what happens. We, we fire off this Apollo, and the light will travel something like this, okay? Awesome. You like it? I love it. Estimated. Okay, so when we have our model really close to our to our main light source, uh, let's say that the model is properly exposed at f11, at f11. within about a foot. Absolutely, so, we have about a foot for the model to move around. That's and right. She will be properly. Exposed. So if you got a fidgety model, a dancing model, and she steps out of that one foot range her exposure is going to change. Yep, it's gonna drop one stop, okay? Because the further the light travels, the less light hits. So our, now our exposure is gonna be F8, but yep. our depth of flash exposure, which is the area the model has to move around, you're is increased. You're essentially uh, increasing that range by, by doubling the distance. Estimated, approximately. Estimated. Approximately. Don't whip out your iPhone app with your depth of with field your calculation. With your inverse square law. Don't do that, okay? And by the way, what the heck is this depth of flash exposure terminology? This is something that's brand okay. new. Did you just make this up out of thin, thin air? Yes, I did. But it works great. <laughs> it works exactly like depth of field for your camera. Okay, the so what happens now? We got this fidgety model. She's properly exposed within this F8 range, and she moves out again. Again, she's going to move out. So what happens is we lose yet another stop of light. We're now down to F5.6, okay? And our but distance? Our, it's not distance. It's depth of flash exposure. Ah, now. depth of flash. I'm sorry to get now doubled again. So we're now at four feet that the model can now move around with correct exposure. And that could be really good, say, for example, if you're taking a picture of a group of people at a wedding. Yep, a group of people at a wedding or just a group of your family. Right, because they're going to be is. properly exposed from one side of the photo to the other. If you had them in the first two quadrants between F11 and F8, you're going to get two different exposures yeah, from right. one side of the picture to the other. Unless they're really skinny people. <laughs> but, okay, so the last one, let's just fill this up just for uh, giggles. Uh, she moves out of this one more time. So you're going to incre increase your depth of flash exposure by doubling it again. Although that, I think that if and you're opening up your aperture to f4 to get a properly exposed yeah. one stop away. Even though she's fidgeting over here, she's probably pretty much running away, buddy. <laughs> so f4. Now you have eight feet for the model to move around, and you have correct exposure. So this is very cool for group shots. Another very cool thing that you could do is you can actually control the background or the light that's hitting that's the background. That's right, background yes. control. Yeah, so for example, I'm gonna put my model here. Sorry I'm gonna draw all over this, guys, okay, but so everybody saw it. Okay, so she's properly exposed at F11. Right next to the flash, but my wall is like, let's say, way over here. Okay, okay? so that means that your wall is going to be roughly two stops less than the proper exposure of your model. Absolutely. So, so that could be really cool. If you want your background to go dark, yeah. or you want it to be 
white, Maybe white or gray or gray, medium gray. Yep, that's pretty much how it's gonna how it's gonna work. The further the light travels, that's a great example of depth of flash. Exposure. You like white drawing? It's gonna be on eBay. <laughs> All right, depth of flash exposure. Got it? Got it.